To say goodbye to a loved one is never easy. Listen to Shakespeare's Juliet parting from her Romeo. She would happily prolong the parting all night. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. But Juliet knew, and we know, that the time must come when the farewells cease and for better or worse, life goes on. That's the theme of this touching story about a mother and her daughter. It's by a valued contributor, Maureen Edwards of Melbourne. The story is called You Wait, Kate. I'm Kim Dodsworth, your Queensland storyteller. This New Year's Day is going to be a scorcher. It's almost dawn. I'm alone at last, sprawled in the hammock in our overgrown garden. My head is throbbing with a monotonous thump, the result of overindulgence in Riesling, the 2014 cask variety, I'm afraid. The wine was a feeble attempt to delay today. How I've agonised, fearful of its arrival, longing for it to be over. Today is farewell to Kate Day. Kate, my only daughter. Today she leaves Australia to live in Ireland with a young man I've yet to meet. I consider her situation a holiday romance taken to the extreme. Kate disagrees. This is my future. This is forever. I've shed secret tears and offered congratulatory lies. A brave coward, continually reminding myself that this is a natural transition, one I should have anticipated. Am I being irrational? Am I being selfish? I tell myself to grow up. But I don't heed my own advice. She's far too young, I mutter under my breath. Infatuation. It wears off. Why can't she see you don't rush into relationships? This is an era of women being free, not tangled up in a situation unlikely to last. Kate has always been so independent. Sensing my unspoken animosity, Kate continually gushes at me. Danny's my soulmate, Mum. We're perfect together. I can't wait until you meet him. I want you to give me away at our wedding, Mum. We'll blitz them, walking down the aisle together. Marriage. I confess I've always hoped for this. A stable relationship for Kate, not one of those on-again, off-again disasters, not multiple partners and nothing lasting, but marriage. She and Danny are in their early twenties. Don't rush it, I silently pray. Kate gabbles on non-stop. And you'll love his mum. She's so vital and interesting and over the moon about Danny and me. Mmm, I bet she is. After all, she's gaining my daughter. And am I not vital and interesting? I decide I definitely dislike her and her son. I watch Kate pack all her treasured possessions, shipping off her life in tea chests. The choice to leave on New Year's Day is deliberate a good omen for their future together. My interpretation of the situation is of a geographical distance too difficult to comprehend. Last night, at midnight, with all our good friends, we joined hands for Old Lang Syne. Midnight. A new year and a new beginning. For some, that is. This morning, as I sway in the hammock, the melody keeps replaying in my mind, forcing me to remember, confronting me with the past. The past that shapes the future. The past that brought me here. I don't wish to remember. I don't want to look back. I swing slowly in the hammock, concentrate on the eucalypt trees glistening in the early morning light. Leaves shimmering from silver to a dark lustrous green. I remember. I see the old stone cottage. England. I entered the world here experiencing a childhood where the end of the world was the perimeter of the village. A bright coal fire flickers in the hearth, casting animal-shaped shadows on floral wallpaper. Two brown and white china dogs sit solemnly on a polished sideboard. My parents doted on me, an only child, an unexpected late addition to their life. Look at my mother, stirring porridge for breakfast, living her... Predictable life, dominated by habit that never varies. 
She sighs, dreaming of Friday night. Ginger and Fred at the cinema. It beats the hell out of reality. My father lights an early morning woodbine, coughs and spits as smoke assaults his lungs. He's grumpy from working shifts at the factory. Not for Dad, the celluloid world of pretense. Through that long, dark tunnel, I listen again to the anguish in my mother's voice. Her wretchedness, caused by me. I told you, Mary, didn't I? I told you not to marry that Joe. He's unstable, he is, and now he's dragging you off to Australia. All that dust and kangaroos and boomerangs. Yes, Mum. And another thing, my girl, your father and me, we're getting on, you know. Neither of us is in good health. Has it occurred to you that we may never see you again? We won't see Kate grow up. Our only grandchild. You wait, Mary. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. One day your turn will come. You're not understanding, Mum. It's my life. And my life is with Joe, in Australia, or anywhere we might choose. Yet it all seemed that simple then. Okay, Mum. Now it's too late. I can see defeat. You were right on all counts. I never saw you and Dad again. And I hid away the sadness deep inside me. Sadness for what might have been. You'd be delighted to see me today. Me and Joe, bitterly divorced long, long ago. And I've become you, and Kate is me. The pattern continues, although I refuse to utter your prophetic words. I refuse to say the words to Kate. You wait, girl, your turn will come. I refuse to say, one day you'll understand. It translates into guilt. Guilt I endured and pretended it didn't exist. Guilt I will not pass on to Kate. Instinct compels me to be supportive. Who am I to interfere? Sunlight filters through the trees, casting lacy patterns on the stone path, the warmth adding to my drowsiness. The house begins to stir. I hear the ringtone of Kate's mobile. That's my cue. It's time to emerge from my shelter and begin the day I've dreaded. I hear footsteps running down the path. It's Kate, bright and bubbly Kate. Oh, there you are, Mum, all tucked up in the hammock. I might have known. You've solved all your problems in that hammock. That's the truth. It's always been my comfort zone. That was Dan on the phone. When Kate smiles, her face brightens everyone around her. Dan is so excited. He's bringing everyone to the airport to meet me. He said to wish you a happy new year. How nice, I say. And you must wish him a wonderful year from me. Hey, look at the garden, Kate. Doesn't it look beautiful this morning? She plucks a rose and hands it to me. It's sparkling in the sunshine. It's always been such a special place. Hey, Mum, remember when Rusty was a puppy and he dug up all the plants and you said he'd have to go? I really thought you meant it, and I cried for hours. What a lovable mutt that Rusty was, I say, always in trouble and always joyous. No one could say that dog didn't have a charmed life. I miss him so much, Kate. It's not the same without him, is it? Why don't you get another dog? No more responsibilities for me, thanks. Maybe later when you come back. If you come back, I mean. You'll take good care, Mum. Of course I will. Come on, Kate, let's go and cook breakfast. A hearty one this morning. Are you all packed? There's no warning. Kate begins to cry. Tears cascade down her cheeks. She sobs uncontrollably. I think I'm scared, Mum. You're here. All my friends are here in Australia. What if it all crashes around me? What if I miss it all too much? I want to turn back time to you and me and Rusty and all the fun times. You're just feeling a little nervous, I say. It happened to me once too. I sound convincing, but my heart is soaring with hope. It won't be difficult to find the words to convince her to stay. I can do it. I'm staying put, Mum. If Denny wants me badly enough, he can come here. If he has to give up his study and career, so what? I belong here with you. I hold her in my arms, stroke her hair until she quietens. She hiccups ungracefully, and I feel the warmth of my baby, my girl and see a young woman in conflict. Let's talk about all these worries, I say. Let's be calm and talk it through. 
I know exactly what I'm going to say, and I'll say it with fierce conviction. I'm acquainted with the script. And now, in my mind's eye, I face the day's ending, knowing this is how it has to be. How it must be. We're standing outside the international exit doors of the airport. Kate walks away, striding through the sliding doors with all the energy and confidence of youth. Goodbye, Kate. Good luck, Kate. See you. From the observation deck, determined to prolong the agony, tears spill unchecked. Tears for my past, for the present, the future. The plane roars along the runway. I watch and wave until the last speck of metal disappears from sight. Who needs kids around anyway? But words echo and re-echo. You wait, Mary, my girl. One day your turn will come, and then you'll understand. Yes. You wait, my Kate. You just wait.